Thank you. Unfortunately, this is as tall as I get, so I hope, uh, I hope it's working. Uh, so actually what President Obama said the day we won, and my team was gathered in our conference room as we paused in our pushing our victory out to come and see what the president was going to say, he said that uh, progress comes very slowly a lot of the time. And it often is two steps forward, one step back. It takes years, if not decades, if not in some cases centuries of engagement and work. And uh, he said there are, there's many, many periods during that point where there's a slog to it. And then there are days where it seems like justice comes like a thunderbolt. And that was one of the days. And I was so moved to hear him say this because that is the story of change. That is the story of how we achieve things. And the thing is we have to retain the hope and our eyes on the prize of the goal. And we have to put forward not the problems and the negativity and the fear that is understandable to fear, but we have to talk about the pathway with hope because that's how we get to those days when justice comes like a thunderbolt. And justice came like a thunderbolt on that day, June 26, 2015, when after more than four decades of work uh, on the part of the LGBT movement and its supporters and its new adherents in the United States, we went from being a despised and oppressed minority, criminalized, arrested, denied jobs, denied dignity, uh, denied almost everything in society, to claiming full and equal participation in the central social and legal institution of our society. And that came when the Supreme Court of the United States on June 26, 2015, affirmed the freedom to marry for same-sex couples. That day was a victory, first and foremost, for families, for real people, for people who were now able to have their love and commitment affirmed, to be able to stand in front of others and be held accountable for that love and commitment and to be supported in it, and to have their friends and community and the law celebrate that love and commitment, as well as afford it all the meanings, tangible and intangible, that come with marriage. But it was not only a victory for gay people in our families, it was also a victory, in this case, in the United States, for our country, for our values, for what we as a country believe we are committed to, something we all know has to be defended, something that many other countries share and that none can take for granted. And it was also a victory for the campaign, for the work that it took to have justice come like a thunderbolt. At a time when there are existential threats to so much that we all care about, the bedrock things that are so important. At a time when so many communities and values are under assault, it is important to remember that transformation can happen, that things can change, that the work you all do, that we all do, that we slog through doing and work to make come down as a thunderbolt, that it actually can work, that we can achieve transformations not only in the law, but first and foremost in the hearts and minds that is the prerequisite for achieving the changes in the law. For us to win in the United States, to win the freedom to marry in 2015 after four decades, we needed four things. We needed the Constitution, and by that I mean the literal charter, the guarantees, the legal bedrock, but I also mean the system, the rule of law, an independent judiciary, the right to assemble, uh, free press, free speech, the things that in rule of law countries we know are essential to human rights and human dignity and human freedom, and that we know, whether it's in the United States today, or in a country like Hungary, or in so many other places around the world, we cannot take for granted. We needed that constitution and the values and the system in order to win. But at the same time, we know from history that those things are not self-enforcing. They are not self-executing. They do not deliver themselves. These promises that societies that are democratic and rule of law make are not fulfilled by themselves. And so we needed three other things in order to win. We needed a movement, many organizations, many players, many battles, many methodologies, many millions of dollars raised and invested, many millions of conversations sparked, litigation, legislation, public education, direct action, electoral work, all the methodologies of social change, as Dr. King put it. We needed a movement of multiplicity to deliver that victory promised 
by the Constitution. But at the same time, with all that multiplicity, it wasn't just a random set of actions because we had two other things. With that multiplicity under the Constitution, we also needed a strategy, and we had a strategy. And to drive that strategy and to leverage the movement, we needed a campaign, an entity who woke up every day focused on what the strategy required and how to make sure that out of this multiplicity, existing or newly developed, the work was being done to fulfill that strategy and bring home the guarantee of the Constitution. Complex, hard, prolonged, but possible. In that mix and in our strategy in the United States, and of course every country is different and has its mix, but there are commonalities and there are elements, in the United States for us to win, litigation was essential, though not sufficient. And since litigation was essential, it's not surprising that lawyers played a vital part in this work of winning. Lawyers like you, lawyers like, theoretically, me. Lawyers who predominantly were in public interest, but also in big firms and solo practitioners doing pro bono work. Lawyers were a central, though not sole, piece of how we got the work done. And the reason lawyers were so important is that because lawyers have both many ways of contributing and because the work required many things to which lawyers could contribute. There were at least three ways in which lawyers, three ways in which lawyers contribute to the kind of work that's needed to achieve this kind of transformation in hearts and minds and the law that we celebrate in this victory. Lawyers have skills, and the skills that lawyers have and to which they devote their time are key elements of the work of change. And again, it's not just litigation, it's legislative work, it's advising, it's the ability to focus, the ability to drive a strategy, the ability to bring people in and get the job done accessing law and politics and engagement on all levels. The skills that lawyers have are essential to this kind of work of change. But it's not just the skills that lawyers bring that allow lawyers to make contributions to this kind of work. There are at least two other things that lawyers bring and that lawyers did bring to this work of winning. Lawyers have credibility, even cachet. Lawyers have a voice. Lawyers are able to get out there and engage, spark the conversations, shape the discussion, focus the attention, and make arguments in law and in morality and in facts and stories, the many different ways in which lawyers can bring their credibility as messengers to deliver the kinds of messages that are needed to create the climate for success. And lawyers have connections. And that's a third way in which you and we as lawyers can contribute. Lawyers can bring in their firms. Lawyers can bring in their clients. Lawyers can, lawyers can bring in the voices of the marketplace and the voices of power into the ferment and the multiple arenas of engagement in which change is delivered. Now, in these three, skills and credibility and connections, probably the most obvious one is skills. That's when, when we say we're lawyers, when we talk about lawyers, people tend to think about lawyering and they tend to reduce it to the kinds of skills like, for example, doing litigation and so on, the thing that classically lawyers do. And in fact, that was an essential ingredient of what it took to win. Uh, between 2013 and 2015, so just the last two years of this more than four decades of battle, there were more than 70 cases brought by lawyers, many of them pro bono, many from public interest firms or from private firms or from big law firms doing this on behalf of the couples and challenges. And it resulted in, after decades of losses and losses and losses and losses, more than 70 wins in that lead up to the 2015 victory. Now in all of those 70 cases, my favorite passage, my favorite sentence came in the case in which we brought the freedom to marry 
through po pro bono efforts on behalf of law firms in Utah to Utah, to the state of Utah, the most, one of the most conservative, one of the most religious states in the United States. And the reason I love this sentence is because it encapsulated what it took to win in this more than four decades of work. The court in Utah said in the Freedom to Marry case, it's not the Constitution that has changed. What has changed is our knowledge of what it means to be lesbian or gay. When the court said that, it underscored something very, very essential which is that while the legal arguments, while the arguments under the Constitution, while the kinds of things lawyers classically do, writing briefs, sketching out a legal roadmap, marshalling evidence, and making the case doctrinally and so on, while these things are part of winning, ultimately that wasn't what it took to win. What it took to win was changing the understanding of what it means to be lesbian and gay. It took changing the public's understanding and the decision makers understanding their ability to see how these legal arguments applied to the people standing before them. The legal arguments were always there. The Constitution was always there. It was the same Constitution in the 70s, 1970s, when the first wave of couples sought the freedom to marry and were all rubber stamped away. They were the same legal arguments, the same constitution that existed when I, as a young law student back in my hair days in 1983, <laughs> wrote a thesis on why gay people should have the freedom to marry. The, the constitution was the same. It was the same when we were losing in the 70s, the same in the 80s, the same in the 90s, the same. What changed was our collective changing the understanding, the ability to see. And that underscores that it's not just the classic, narrow, if you will, skills that lawyers bring that opens up a mandate for change. It underscores how important the work of putting our skills in a variety of ways to leveraging our connections, to using our credibility, and to sparking the kind of work that's needed not just in the courts of law, but in the court of public opinion to truly achieve and sustain the kind of transformation we want. A good example of how that all comes together was in a good piece of lawyering. A good piece of lawyering in the Freedom to Marry case was that when we stood in front of the United States Supreme Court, we of course didn't just have the party briefs brought on behalf of these couples seeking the Freedom to Marry, we had the many amici, the many friends of the court who offered all kinds of stories and arguments and testimony and moral witness as to how so many parts of society had now come to understand why the excluding of gay people from the freedom to marry was wrong, not just for them, but for the values of the society. And in one of those briefs, we pulled together more than 370, well, we pulled together 379 leading businesses, corporations, and employers who made the case to the United States Supreme Court on behalf of business. In that business brief, leveraged, of course, by attorneys, in that business brief, the businesses wrote, quote, inclusion strengthens rather than weakens our most important institutions. When we integrated our schools, education improved. When we opened our juries to women, our democracy became more vital. When we allowed lesbian and gay soldiers to serve openly in uniform, it enhanced unit cohesion. When same-sex couples are married, just as when opposite-sex couples are married, they serve as models of loving commitment to all. These observations, the businesses wrote, ring true for companies as well. Diversity and inclusion strengthen, not weaken, our businesses. I love this example of lawyering because, number one, it was a powerful argument. Number two, it was being made to the Supreme Court on behalf of powerful voices. Number three, those voices were leveraged and brought in by lawyers operating not just as brief writers, but as persuaders, as connectors, as messengers. And it made the case connecting the question in this particular legal battle to the deeper values that you at Pillnet and as pro bono lawyers and increasingly as the legal community comes to stand for. 
law that works for all, the power and importance of diversity and inclusion and equality and freedom and the connectedness of that work in, internally and in our society. Through this kind of work, through this kind of lawyering, through this kind of engagement, not only in the courts of law, but in the courts of public opinion, we can achieve transformation. When I wrote that law school thesis in 1983, there were zero countries in the world where gay people could marry. Today, as we're gathered here, we have 24 countries on six continents where gay people can share in the freedom to marry. That's more than a billion people in the world who now live in a freedom to marry country, up from zero. <laughs> One billion plus is more than 15% of the world's population, and that's a remarkable change and in progress and achievement, but 15% is not 100%. So I say to my friends, and you're gonna hear from them in the panel coming up, in Taiwan, in Australia, in Austria, where we won a freedom to marry ruling two days ago, and we can talk about that, and in all the other countries where we have not yet won, there's a mountain of evidence, a mountain of expertise, a mountain of experience saying that ending discrimination helps families and hurts no one. We must believe we can mount that mountain, make people see it, open their eyes, stand there and see the promised land, and we can get there. And this is what you've dedicated your lives to. There are so many ways you can make this happen as lawyers. And there's so many pieces of the work needed to happen in so many places where the work is unfinished. Let's go out and do pro bono. Let's do good and make the world better. <laughs>